Jason Phils, New York could move into a share of the wild card lead with a win. They had Pedro Martinez on the hill. Looks good. Top of the six. Phils down 2 1. Chase Utley takes Pedro deep. His 20th of the year joins Juan Samuel as the only Phils second baseman to hit 20 in a season. We're tied at two. Bottom of the six. Cliff Floyd facing Brett Myers. Look at Kenny Lofton. Beautiful grab. And Myers not afraid to emote to the seventh. Utley again off Pedro. Martinez gives up four homers in a game for the first time since 1998. Utley the first guy to take him deep twice in a game since that same year. Phil's win 8-2. Cards and Marlins. Florida trying to keep pace with the Phil's atop the wild card standings. Albert Pujols won for his last 14. One RBI in his last five games. That did not last. In the fifth. Cards up 3-0. Pujols into the gap. Scores a run. Pujols fifth straight 100 RBI season to start his career. First guy to do that since Ted Williams. It's rare, but not as rare as this. Bottom of the eighth. Marlins down 10 nothing. Jeremy Hermida in his first major league at bat. A grand slam. William Dugleby. Friends called him Frosty Bill. Not sure why. <laughs> Only other guy to do it. 1898. Cards do win though. 10-5. Frosty Bill. Reds yes. Astros. Roger Clemens not pitching, so Houston expected to score at least one run for his buddy Andy Pettit. Top four. Watch how he handles Sean Casey. Well, that was a filthy breaking ball of some sort. Let's look again. Casey's even got a laugh because he went he went all cricket on the people, but the wicked googly he get, couldn't handle that. Later in the at bat, that would be. Half a swing, but a whole strike. Pettit, seven innings pitched, four hits, no earned runs, five Ks. Bottom five, two on Astros, two runs already in in the frame. Brad Osmiths, fly ball to right center. Junior giving chase, that's down. Chris Burke, Adam Everett score. Osmiths, now he so apparently forgot he was a catcher. He will be thrown out at third. Astros, though, get 10. See, Clemens not pitching. They get 10. Win big. Johnson, five Cy Young Awards. Hernandez, five career starts. Felix, two and a half when the big unit debuted in the bigs here in the first each row. No luck. Raul Banez, less luck. Johnson fired up early. Bottom third. Johnson in a bit of a trouble. Can we get some damage here? A Rod, excellent backhand play. You got to go some to get the speedy each row. He does top play nominee. Top four, Gary Sheffield leading off. 1-0 on a Robbie Cano solo home run. Chef does same off Hernandez, his 28th, 100th RBI. Hernandez goes eight, gives up four hits, two runs, seven Ks. But in this one, the M's all-time win leader gives a little pitching lesson to the young man who one day might be the M's all-time wins leader. Johnson, seven innings pitch, three hits, no runs. Yankees win 2-0. Well, let's go to the top of the AOS. Days took the series opener from the Angels. They lead the division by two games, bottom four. Joe Blanton facing by Sierra is Therese. Darren Erstead on second, a little single. Erstead scores, but look at this. Nobody covering second. Jay Payton, good hustle to get to the bag before his tourist. Excellent work. What do you, that's unassisted by the outfielder. Rarely do you see that, huh? Top eight, Scott Shields facing Nick Swisher with the bases loaded and two outs. One run game, and that is safe in the glove. Angels escape that by giving up just one. Top nine. 2-1 Angels, K-Rod facing Eric Chavez, who had a base hit in this one. He's got 1,000 hits and 1,000 career games, but uh, needed 1,001. K-Rod gets the save. The Angels win 2-1. So here are the latest numbers in the American League West. A still up one game. Angels, though, end their five-game losing Jake and Oakland seven-game winning streak all at the same time. Thursday series closing starters, Joe Kennedy for Oakland, Irvin Santana for the home team. Season series so far, 8-6 Oakland with five more meetings scheduled. I can't wait to win the World Series and have Bud Shilley come up to it. <laughs> I really can't. Who knows what will come out then? But if, if we got an opportunity, I hope we do go there and he comes in and presents it. Because I, I know for one thing, he'll shy away from me. Strong words from David Wells, eliciting a strong reaction from Major League Baseball. Wells summoned to the commissioner's office in New York Wednesday. This after he lashed out at the commish for failing to reduce his six-game suspension, stemming from a July argument with two umpires, saying, among other things, that the commissioner had dragged his feet on steroids in general and specifically in the Rafael Palmero case. Wells emerged from the meeting a changed man, or 
at least sounding like one, saying, quote, Now that I have had this opportunity to sit down and discuss the issues, I better understand the procedures that go with steroid testing. I now know that neither Bud Selig nor anyone else delayed the Palmero case and that the commissioner's office has worked with the union to improve the steroid policy. I understand that I was wrong in my statements about these issues, and for that, I apologize. Wells will be back on the Hill Sunday. His team taking on the D-Rays on Wednesday. David Ortiz, four homers in his last four games. Make it five homers in his last five games. Taking Casey Fossum deep in the bottom of the fifth. 36th of the year, ties it up at five. Later, bottom five, same score. Kevin Millar to right center. Joey Gathright. That is a top play nominee. The replay confirms what we already suspected. That was a nice catch. Bottom seven, still tied at five. Runner on, Millar. Off the Coke bottle and left. Millar's second homer of the game. Red Sox up 7-5. They win 7-6. Ale record 13th straight home game. They've scored seven or more runs. So the Red Sox maintain their two-and-a-half game lead over the Yankees in the AL East. Both teams close out four-game series on Thursday. The Yankees play an afternoon game in Seattle, while the Red Sox host Tampa Bay again under the lights at Fenway. Tigers-Indians rained out Tuesday on the diamond. Wednesday, top eight, score tied at two. We're tied no more. Pudge Rodriguez, former driller. 13th homer of the season. This one at the expense. Rafael Betancourt's ERA. Tigers up 3-2. Then in the bottom of the eighth, Tigers one on Grady Sizemore flies center okay there you go that's an out but Casey Blake caught off second Omar Infante gets Blake 7-6-4 double play every mistake magnified in a playoff race that's costly Tigers beat the Indians 4-3. Rangers looking to make it three or four against the reeling White Sox. El Duque seven and one in his first ten starts, just one and five though in his last eight. Let's go to the sixth. He was cruising, but it all came to a screeching halt. Man on Rangers down two one. Michael Young going deep. His 20th of the year puts the Rangers on top three two for the second straight year. All four Texas starting infielders have hit at least 20 homers. The 1940 Red Sox, the only other team to do that even once. Three batters later, still no one out. One on Alfonso Soriano a two run shot his 32nd as the Rangers win it nine to two the White Sox struggling the AL Central standings relevant once again they do maintain that seven game lead over the tribe with the Indians loss as for the wild card Yanks up a game on the Angels and a game and a half on Cleveland wild card race playing two with Andrew Jones in the first place Braves bottom of the first Braves down one nothing two on for Jones his 43rd of the season leads the major seven more than his previous career high three for four five RBI Braves win five three well after a shower change of clothes they played again Braves Nationals the sequel by the way Frank Robinson's 70th birthday on Wednesday top third game tied at one runners on first and second Nick Johnson strikes out Brad Wilkerson thrown out at third sliding past the bag well Nationals failed to score in the inning and afterwards Robinson signals to home plate umpire Jim Wolf call was late look at him. you want to come talk to me Wolf he's not getting worked up and then what ensues <laughs> is one of the all-time great children things we have a stare down there you go don't blink. Nothing. This is where you right now you'd like stare a hole, stare a hole, fall in it. You know they keep going. This is this is between the the half inning there. It's King Stoneface right they here. Just keep going. Oh, Nothing. I, I oh, the Frank blink there at least. Look at Wolf. He is he is not to be outdone here. Can we emphasize this is in real time? This is some point this has to end, right? This is nonsense. Although it's better than showing the kids the whole cussing thing that they do quite often. <laughs> there we go. Look at it. Maybe it's like that girl you couldn't talk to in high school and you really had a thing for her instead of, you know, you really... Uh, 44 and a half seconds the entire time between innings. They go to the ninth. Look, Nick Johnson again. Workerson this time successfully steals third. The ball gets away. The run scores. The Nationals win 4-3. All's well. It ends well. And if we could just get some Visine for everybody, that'd make me feel better. <laughs> All right. Top four teams in the wild card race were separated by a mere half game at the start of the night. On Thursday morning, it is the Phillies who stand alone at the top still. Half game up, but only the Astros are that close. Marlins, Mets, nudge, drop back ever so slightly. Take me out to the ball game. Steiner wants our resident Sports Center music critic. Here was his take on Carl Lewis. 
Jones, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see and the rockets red flag uh -oh. for the land of the free. That was Sarge National Anthem. <laughs> Written by Francis Scott off key. <laughs> Charlie inexplicably always went to the ear when things got crazy. Now his big game. Two and a three. Take me out to the ball game. I don't care if we never get back. For it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. Follow me. Follow me to freedom. Oh, invoking classic Sports Center commercials along the way. As for the game, bottom of the ninth, Dodgers lead 7-0, two outs. Derek Lowe facing Nephi Perez. That's all you need to see. Lowe firing a complete game, one hitter in his first ever start at Wrigley. Dodgers win 7-0. Time now for our top plays. We start appropriately enough at number 10, White Sox and Rangers. It's two for the price of one. Hank Blaylock going to his left, and then Hank Blaylock. Going to his right. Rangers win 9-2. Sox finish August 12 and 16. First losing month of the year. All right, from number nine to number nine. Mos mascot challenge, fourth annual Capital One All-America Mascot Challenge. You can start voting September 1st. I spent all of Wednesday with Udy, the Delaware Blue Hen. He's a good egg. Number eight, Cardinals and the Marlins. Jeremy Hermida, a grand slam in his first major league at bat. Second player ever to do that. Another opportunity to mention Frosty Bill Duckleman. There you go. Number seven, tomato fights in Spain. There you go. It's like a national pastime. Number six, Pirates Brewers. Prince Fielder, the walk-off two-run homer. To beat the Pirates, Brewers win 6-5. Number five, if you, you play the softball, of course, you know the advantage of having an elephant pitch for you. They work for peanuts. Thanks. No, number four, Phillies and Mets. Kenny Lofton. <laughs> A couple nice catches there. Phil's win 8-2. Courtesy smile wouldn't hurt. That was good. There we go. Genuinely fun. What do we have here? Devil Rays, Red Sox, Kev Millar had two homers and then got robbed by Joey Gratton. Number two, A's and Angels. Mycer is tourist, the blooper. Then look at Jay Payton, the hustle. To tag him out of second. Angels win 2-1. Number one, Rockies, Giants, Todd Linden. Leaping, diving, catching. Excellent. He gets a 10. Game of the Angel A's dramatic three-game series. This one has felt like a playoff series so far. The A's 19-3, their last 22 road games. Look at this, Orlando Cabrera, the soft pop to Mark Ellis. He drops it on purpose to try to turn two, but the umpires say, we're going to call that a catch. Ken Maka doesn't like it. We like deception in baseball. Next batter, Garrett Anderson, blooper to left. Whoa, Bobby Kelty can't make the play. Figgins goes to third. Now, two batters later, two outs for Benji Molina. He bats fifth, doesn't offer a lot of protection for Vladimir Guerrero, but he's hitting 305 and gets the RBI here. The story of this game, though, was Irvin Santana, the emerging angel starter. Look at that yacker. To Mark Ellis, that's a, that's a tailor-made double play. 113 pitches, 75 strikes for Santana. Now bottom of the eighth, double steal by the aggressive Angels. It's Mike Sosha baseball, Vlad and Erstad both running. Throw to left, Vlad will score. And the Angels are winners. And they are now back in the first place tie in the American League West with the A's. Great pitching was the overriding theme of this series. The A's and Angels combined to score just nine runs in the three games. Cologne, Lackey, Santana combined to allow just one run in 24 and two-thirds. Won 18-19 at Fenway Park, and they scored at least seven runs in 13 straight home games. Batting seventh and playing first, John Olerud. Hitting 346 at Fenway Park this year in support of Bronson Arroyo and the Sox. Tie the game at two. And what you wish for might come true. What Ryan Miller is to Guster, John Olerud is to the Red Sox. He's 14 for 30 in, in August and getting off to a good start in September. Bottom of the eighth, Olerud. This is his 500th career double. Ties him with Goose Goslin for 42nd all-time. Yeah, they score seven or more runs again for the 14th straight home game, and the Red Sox sweep the doubles. As for the Yankees, getaway day in Seattle. Top of the sixth, the Yanks had a 1-0 leaders. Bernie Williams facing Joel Pinero. And Bernie skies it down the left field line. Adrian Beltre, what a grab. 
think she's Willie Mays there for a second, except not in center field. Bottom six, serious stuff here. Raul Ibanez, line drive comebacker, right to Jarrett Wright, just misses his face. We've seen this way too often this season. Injured collarbone, x-rays negative. Miguel Ojeda, his last home run came October 2nd, 2004. With the bases empty, Ojeda off Tanyan Sturts. Get out of town, he means it. His first HR as an M. The Mariners take care of the Yankees. So here you go. Up to the second. The American League wild card and the Eastern Division. Yanks lost, costly on two accounts. They're now tied for the wild card lead with the Angels and A's. Of course, the Angels and A's are also tied for the lead in the AL West. And with the Red Sox winning it again at Fenway, Pool Astros a half game back as they entertain the Reds. You got to like their chance when Roy Oswald faces Cincinnati. In the top of the first, well, you get what's coming. It's Ken Griffey Jr. Oswald strikes out the side to start the game. Here in the fifth, tied at one, two on and one down. Oof. Another strikeout for Roy. Next batter gets Aaron Harang. Get out of another jam. Oswald strikes out a career high 11. Allowed just one earned run. Lance Berkman. When was the last time this guy hit a home run at home? How about July 29th? Astros get the insurance run. They win. Roy Oswald 15-0 against the Reds. Rubber game of the Mets Phillies three-game series. Tom Glavin. He almost signed with the Phillies when he was a free agent. Considered it. Went to a Flyers hockey game. Courted around Philly. Top of the first no score. Pat Burrell to Glavin. Can't handle it. Would have been a double play. Could have been in the inning. Although Steve, you never can assume the double play. Two batters later, David Bell. Bases loaded. Jason Michaels will score. Abreu scores. 2 nothing Phillies. Glavin 0-6 against the Phillies as a Met. Maybe he should have signed here. How about Ryan Howard looking like Mo Vaughn circa 95. Billy Wagner, 22nd straight save. And the Phillies are winners. These two will play again in Philly in late September. Nationals in Atlanta, two games off the pace, heading into action. Bottom of the third, Braves at a 4-1 lead. Runners in the corners and two down. A full count, Jeff Francoeur. I mean, every night, guy does something good. How about a three-run home run? His 11th home of the season, Braves were in a laugher, right? Up 7-1. Well, not exactly. Vinny Castillo, the top of the seventh, snaps a seven-game RBI drought. We were tied at seven. Bottom 10, your leadoff batter, Andrew Jones. The base is clear, the one, two. Swung on, hit high in the air, deep left field. Back goes Wilkerson. Track at the wall. It is gone, and the Braves win. Braves win an 8-7. Andrew Jones, another game-winning bomb. Braves survived blowing a six-run lead. It's his 44th homer of the season, fifth career walk-off, second this season. He's the only player in the bigs to do that. All right, the loss puts the Nationals three games back of the Phillies. The Transition to top plays. Starting at number 10, Nationals Braves, eighth inning tied at seven. Chris John Guzma pops it up in a foul territory. Ryan Langerhans makes the grab. Braves go on to win. I mean, it's a nice catch. Good deal. Well, it's number 10. Okay, we'll get better. Number nine. 11. Doug Floaty break dancing in the backfield for the Patriots. Floaty, 8 of 13, 69 yards, uh, one interception for the New England legend. Number eight, Central Florida, South Carolina, Blake Mitchell finding Noah Whiteside. 49 yards for the touchdown. South Carolina would go on to win. So far, not that impressed, John. Well, number seven, it gets better. Ernie Williams, foul territory. Adrian Beltran goes a long way in Seattle. That's a beautiful catch right. with the wall there. Mariners go on to beat the Yankees 5-1. Making progress here at six, Phillies Mets. Jason Michaels pops one up. Victor Diaz, where's he hanging out? Nice grab there. Mets would lose the game, though, to the Phillies. Halfway there, number five. Texans, Bucks, Tony Banks. Looks for Jabbar Gaffney, and oh, it's one-handed. You gotta like that one, Steve. Yes. Look at that. Look, eyeball sockets to the pigskin. Redskins, Ravens at number four. Two-point conversion. Here you go. Derek Anderson's pass tip. Randy Himes tipped it and then stayed with it. Amazing play. Number three. Let's see some wheels. Kurt Kittner. Deep to Mark Bradley. Oh, beautiful. Creates the space and then makes the gorgeous catch. He had three catches, 61 yards. Number two, Jets-Eagles, Mike McMahon. 
throwing, picked clean by Rashad Washington. Rashad Washington with the interception. Okay, call the Red Cross and help out while I have a second, an extra plug for them. Jets would win. 99-yard return on the interception. A couple nice blocks. Number one, Lawrence Maroney, showing he's happy to be the feature back in the first quarter. Maroney with not one but two touchdown runs of over 65 yards. Two separate plays in Brady Bunch fashion. Maroney 191 yards in the first half alone.